Hey guys, Lance here and welcome back. Today I'd like to go over another project video with you guys. Um, today I'm going to be installing a auto top off system in my tank. I'm going to explain why I'm putting the one that I'm putting in my tank and why they are beneficial to your tank. So let's get started. Okay, there's three main reasons why I recommend you get an auto top off system for your tank. First reasoning would be to maintain a decent water level. Why would you want to maintain a decent water level? Well, because as your water level drops due to evaporation, your salinity level will increase. And then when you bring that water level back up to where it needs to be, your salinity level will decrease back down to where it needs to be. Um, that constant change in salinity level can be kind of hard on your fish and coral. Another good reason for maintaining a decent water level is for your skimmers. Um, once you set your skimmers, you can just kind of forget them if you maintain a same water level because as your water level decreases or increases you need to adjust your skimmers to do to go with that as well. Second reason I recommend you get an auto top off system for your tank is the ability to replenish a lot of them trace elements that your tank needs. Um, all you got to do is just dose it into your reserve of auto top off water and then it will kind of maintain a lot of them trace elements which will help in the long run with water changing. Third main reason why I recommend you get an auto top off system, well, it's simple. It's just a lot easier. You don't have to carry buckets over constantly. You don't have to constantly keep an eye on your tank. So you're going to be gone for a couple days. Well, I've got 18 gallons of storage. I don't have to worry about evaporating water. Okay, guys, there's all kinds of different auto top off systems out there. I'm not saying this is the best way or the only way you should do it. I'm just saying this is the way that I'm going to do it. Um, I can recommend that if you're going to buy a complete kit off of like eBay or something like that for an auto top off system, you're going to want to spend over a hundred bucks to get a decent one. Now, that being said, I've got just a little under 40 bucks invested in, in this entire system. Um, and it's pretty well fail safe if you ask me. The style that I'm going to be installing today is a float valve that will run off of this storage tank at a higher level and then um, as this float level, as the float valve comes down, it will bring some of the water in and then shut off as the water level comes back up. Now, the reason I'm using only 15 gallons is because if this was to ever get stuck, let's say a snail or salt creep got in here and made this valve so it wouldn't move, I'm only going to be putting in a maximum of a 15 gallons, which my sump is a 30 gallon sump and I'm under 15 gallons of running right now. Okay, so here we are at the uh, whiteboard again. Um, once again, sorry about my crap drawing, but uh, this will kind of help explain how this system is supposed to work. Okay, so what you have here is I've got my main tank with all the water in it, right? And then I've got my sump, which water will feed from my main tank to my sump through this chamber, um, you know, that center chamber that I put in there the other day. It'll dump out this bottom deal here, come back up and over top of here into the um, refrigerium. And then the water will go down my bubble trap into my return pumps, which I now have two. Um, I ended up being able to put two pumps in there, so that's kind of nice. And then it will dump back into my tank. So over time, though, this level right here and here will drop due to evaporation. And the reason it's dropping in here is because my two skimmer pumps are faster than my return pumps. So this will always be the lowest point of my tank. So what I'm going to do is put a storage tank up on the wall um, over by my sump. Um, and then I'm going to put a valve on it with a uh, quick disconnect. That way I can take this, uh, I can shut the tank off, the storage tank off, take it over to my RBI unit, fill it up, put it back up on the wall, hook my hose back up, and then turn my valve back on. And then the water is going to travel down this line into that float switch. And what that float switch will do is when the water level starts to decrease, the float will, will open up a valve inside of, its, inside of the switch itself. And then as the water increases, it'll shut the water level off, which will maintain a constant level in our sump. So let's go decide where we're going to put the hole. Okay, guys, here we are down at the sump. And what you first want to do is put your float inside your sump, see what location it'll work at, still function, and keep your water level where you want it. And once you decide where it's at, put your mark. I've already marked it right here. And now we're going to bust down the sump yet again and try to hopefully drill it without breaking it. Okay, so here we are with the sump. And if you see my last video on drilling glass, footage kind of sucked, but I used a piece of wood with a hole in it to hold the bit in place. And then I used the gallon jug with a hole in it 
to keep the pit cold so the glass doesn't get too hot. So, with hope and prayers, I won't break it this time again. Okay, so I'm actually gonna drill this in real time, not speed up the camera footage or anything like that, just so you can kind of tell how fast it takes, or how long it takes, I should say, um, to get through glass. You wanna put little to no pressure at all on there and uh, just kind of let the drill work its way through. So, wish me luck. There we go folks, there's the plug out of the glass, it's a real small hole this time so I wasn't as scared as last time but uh, there's a hole in glass, let's see if we cracked it. Looks like we didn't crack it, it's a little lower than I wanted it to be but it'll work. I uh, pre-drilled the wood and um, the way I drilled the wood, the hole wouldn't line up with where I wanted it. So my sump just won't be as a high level, but it'll just stay at that one level. So it's not like it really matters anyway. Okay, so now we want to sand them rough edges around that hole there. To get it to get all the burrs and stuff off so you don't cut the crap out of yourself so we'll take it downstairs and get to work on it again okay we're back down in the basement here and i'm going to install the float valve now um i will mention that you need to take some kind of sandpaper any kind of grip really will work just to knock off the real sharp edge that you just made with that hole now if you get the float system and you get this float identical to mine it came with a seal a little kind of a little uh clear packing washer I would say I guess you want to keep that seal on the float and then put the float through the tank and then put your outside knot on there the reason you want that seal on the inside opposed to the outside is it will it will seal the water from even coming to the outside of the tank rather than coming in between you know your float and the glass and then possibly leaking on the outside of the tank now this doesn't have to be super tight. Just make sure your float is straight. 
and get it snug enough to where you can kind of see the that packing washer kind of flat out a little bit. So you know you got a good tight seal. Kind of take your float, bounce it a couple times, see what happens. Looks good. Now I'm gonna rinse it all off, build the sump back up over by the tank, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna build the uh, storage tank. So we'll be back. Okay guys, we're back. Now this is what I'm gonna build my storage container out of. Um, it's just a Rubbermaid um, tote. Um, it's a 15 gallon. It, uh, want the bottom watertight, of course the lid isn't, but all the lid's gotta do is just keep dust and dirt out. Um, we do not want to create an uh, airtight lid because then vacuum will create a issue with the water coming down to the tank. And I also want to put my spigot, which is actually what it is. It's just a uh, $5 spigot I got from the hardware store. And I want it in the center of the side because my ledge, it'll sit right up on the ledge. And then my spigot will screw, I want to screw it in just, just almost all the way to the bottom, but not on the curve because you need a flat surface for your uh, silicone to kind of set to. Um, you can get packing washers. A tube of silicone is like eight bucks and then the washers themselves were like 12 bucks a piece and you need two of them to guarantee you wouldn't have any leaks. Um, another benefit to using this spigot is now all I need is a garden hose end and I can pull that off and I can use this container for anything if I wanted to. So I've got a three quarter inch outlet I'm going to use a 7 8 uh, wood drill bit. Hopefully that will be big enough to just kind of get it started. I want it to be really tight when I screw it in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these um, nuts and I'm going to screw it on here first. And then I'm going to take silicone around there, screw this into the tote. And then I've got another nut that I will silicone and screw on to this end on inside of the on, on the inside of the uh, tote. So let's drill the hole. And it screws in. So uh, now I'll silicone it, screw it in, <clears throat> grab another nut, and screw that nut off on from the backside. So silicone here. As always, I have your paper towel already because silicone is nasty. Kind of take your finger and wipe the excess silicone away. Kind of make it look a little bit better. But you all know that I really don't care. If you look at my sump, you'd understand. <laughs> you can at least try, though. Okay, so outside part's done. Now we're going to put the nut on the inside.
why you have two nuts is because the plastic itself, if you were to just try to screw the plastic in there and then nut the back side, uh, the plastic would eventually work its way through the tote and it would start to leak there. So I use two nuts so you can kind of smash that tote in between the two nuts, which will keep it pretty tight. Um, and then uh, your silicone will keep it watertight. So. Getting her pretty tight there. Okay, now I want to let that silicone dry for a little while and then uh, we'll water test it. Okay, while the uh, silicone's drying, I'm going to put together my hose system that I'm building. Um, this stuff here, I, you can get online um, on eBay. I got this 50 foot roll for like six bucks. Um, really good deal. Um, I took this, I took, I took a bit of this hose down to the hardware store. I said, hey man, I need to go from garden hose spigot to this line what can you do and he brought me over to the plumbing and then there's a bunch of fittings and stuff i think this fitting was like eight bucks or something it was kind of expensive this whole ordeal was pretty expensive if you wanted to without a valve um i wouldn't recommend it for like when you do water changes and stuff because all i got to do is reach over turn that gate valve off and then i can do my water change um if you don't have a water change you know if you don't have a valve then you have to either wait till that storage tank is completely drained or take the, the tub down and put it below the level of the uh, sump and then eventually it'll it'll you know you it'll just stop feeding it and that'd be a whole lot cheaper because then you have to do is just buy like this uh, two dollar fitting here and then you know just a nut or something on the back side that you could just screw right into there I wanted to be able to have uh, a quick disconnect with the hose plus have the choice of just shutting the valve off so that's what I've done is I bought uh, a garden hose um, adapter and then I got this fitting here so what I'll do is I'll put these two together this fitting in there I'll heat this hose up pretty good get it to shove down around that bar once it cools it should be watertight and then I'll cut it to size and uh, I'll have a quick removable hose that I can take off of there with a rubber gasket in there so uh, you know after you can take it on and off and not have to worry about it sealing back up again because it's got a you know it's got a garden garden end hose in it with the rubber in it so this is probably the most expensive part of this whole project well the tote is i think the tote was like 17 bucks but this part here i could have gotten away with a lot cheaper but uh i wanted to be able to you know to unhook the hose and have a shut off valve so i should tell you guys too anytime you're putting plumbing together if it's threaded you want to get some pipe um, thread tape is what they call it and uh, make sure you put it on the threads it'll it'll make it watertight for you um, I do have a little bit of a complaint um, I'd like to go on about here I've been trying to get a lawnmower blenny for my tank uh, for about four weeks now I have a huge hairline issue. Um, I'm trying to take care of it. I've gotten turbo snails and a couple other cleaner shrimp, and uh, it's, it's it's just they're not keeping up with it. So I I'm trying to get a lawnmower blenny to uh, to take care of my issue. And I called Petco three times now. Well, I went up there once, and uh, you know they didn't have them, but they had the option to get them. So, I uh, went home, talked to the wife, and I said, you know, I, I kind of want to get one, they're only 20 bucks. So I called back up there and said, hey, I want to order one, call me when it's in. Two weeks go by, no answer, no call. I call them up, I ask them about it, they don't even know I asked them. Um, so either the employee I talked to or the manager of the store didn't, uh, didn't write it down, I'm not exactly sure. 
But anyway, then another week goes by. I call him. I say, hey, you got my lawnmower, brother? Yep, yep, we do. Awesome, you know. So I drive up there again. I get there, and I can't see a lawnmower blending in there. I'm like, what the heck? And uh, so I walk up to the lady, and I say, uh, you know, I'm here to pick up a lawnmower blenny. Um, I called earlier. You said you guys had it. Yep, yep, it's right here. So she goes over, and she starts going in this tank, and I can see a, uh, a little scooter blenny in there. And I'm like, mm, she probably thinks that's it. And uh, so she reaches in, scoops that scooter blenny out. And I said, that's, that's not a lawnmower blenny. And uh, she says, yeah, it is. I said, no, it isn't. And I pointed right at the picture. I said, you should probably learn your fish before you try selling them. I said, this is like the third time that I've been up here for this lawnmower blenny. And, uh, I mean, I can't, even, I can't even begin to tell you how disappointed I was. And then she goes, well, is there anything else I can get you? Because we're having problems with the lawnmower blennies. And I, I said, nope. I said, it's probably last time I'll buy from a store again. I said, this is why everybody's going to online shopping. Because of this reason. Um, so, um, you guys can kind of leave your comments and what you think about that. I mean, I understand trying to keep your money local, but it's hard to do that when you're more educated than the people that are trying to sell you their products. Um, you know, she, she should have known that. There shouldn't have been an issue there at all. Um, she's just not, she hasn't been trained right. So, pretty, pretty disgusted with Petco right now. Um, I'm probably just going to be going full on online. Um, a lot of your stuff on eBay is a lot cheaper anyway. Um, but uh, I was just going to try to get my livestock through a pet store themselves. But uh, they've kind of ruined it for me. So we'll see what it does online. I'm going to see if I can't track one down. And uh, maybe Live Aquaria. I think Live Aquaria and Petco are together now. So I'm probably not going to go there. But we'll see. So Okay, so the sum's up and running again. Um, I've got enough new water new salt water in there to run the skimmers on low setting and the tank return pumps are running right now and it still needs more water i'm about out of salt mix uh mixed water so now i need to hopefully i've got enough in this five gallon bucket here see that hose with that auto top off uh float there that line's just going into this five gallon bucket full of salt water right now because I wanted to check out the float and I didn't want to overfill it. And you can hear that pump right there sucking air right now because the water level is so low. Um, but I just wanted to show you that that is working. And then once that comes up, that should stop that flow. So we'll see. Okay, so it's been mm, eight hours since I did the silicone job. Everything looks really dry. I put uh, a couple gallons of hot water in there to see what it would do. And uh, it all seems pretty dry, other than a little bit of uh, condensation built up. Um, but it's not dripping, so let's see if this works now. Okay, so it drains. Does it shut off? Yes, it does. All right, let's drain it all out and hook it up. Okay, guys, been a long day, but I got her done. Um, here is the um, freshwater storage. Granted, it's very low right now. Um, this is. All, I, all, all of the RODI water that I had at the time. The valve, it is not leaking at this time. And there's this right here, you loosen that up by hand, you can take this off. So it's easy to take this into the other room to fill it. And then also I can use this container for something else. And when I'm doing water changes, all I have to do is shut this valve off and it will not put any more fresh water into the tank. So. As the water comes through the valve out of the storage tank, it comes down this blue line here into the float valve. And as you can see right now, it is putting some water into my sump. Um, and you can kind of see the, how it kind of uh, um, leaves that weird 
fresh water into salt water look. Um, I'm hoping that it won't take much more of the fresh water to top it off because I do not want to stress my fish out. Um, but I did not want to put salt water in the storage tank for the simple reason I do not want to bring up my salinity level that high. Especially because right now it's a little high, um, which is probably another reason why I'm not too worried about that little bit of fresh water getting in there. Um, but uh, she's all done. I'll bring my skimmers up to level once the tank has been topped off and um, should be good to go. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.